Last class, we turned in our first exercises and started our second. So to get to our second exercise, we can go to unit modules. We're in unit three, our introduction to vector shapes. And then we can go just to the, the last part of it, which is where we turn it in. It will give you the deadline, which is today, and how many points it's worth. Remember to get points for your exercises. You just want to meet all the requirements. The requirements for this are that we make some sort of emoji even as simple as this in this program and then we remake it using the shape tools within PhotoP. And it's possible because all of these really simple emoji makers are all just done with manipulated vector shapes. But even, and that's why some of them look kind of bad, but even something like just the heart can be a tricky shape to make out of vectors. But we will wrestle with all of that, and it's going to teach us a lot about vector imaging, the basics of it. So where we left off, let's see how organized I've been. I'm going to open up my folder, open up my digital, or my exercise 2, and... I saved a PSD file, right? This is what I had made in Emoji Maker, but I want to turn it into my cat. That's what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to open up my PSD in Emoji Maker, and we'll see what we've got. So I've got layers here on one side, very good. I'm actually going to make a duplicate Command J of my background, turn that to 100%, and put that at the very bottom as well. So we're making a little sandwich. Actually, I already had it, but a little sandwich of my reference images, what I call my guiding images. So I have one at the top, one at the bottom. These are the things that come from the Emoji Maker program. I'm not sure why I'm not able to see it. Let's see. There we go. I just have to scroll. And then on top of that, come on, I have all of these different layers. This one at the top, I'm going to unlock. And you want to make sure its opacity is only 25%. This is called onion skinning. And then the other thing I think could be helpful is to make a new layer at the background just using the little post-it icon. You can also go to layer, new, new layer. That will also do it. And we're going to fill it. We're not going to use the paint bucket. We're just going to use the, the blanket fill. So you go to edit and then fill. And I'm going to fill it with white at 100% normal mode. There it is. And then I'm going to put it behind my background image. So everything's filled with white. So if I want to see what vectors I have, I leave all my vectors at 100%. But I can see them on a white background or on a, an empty background. Right. So these are the vector shapes I've built so far. This onion skin layer at the very top kind of helps me see what I need. So the last thing I did was an ear. It just used the same color that I had from before, from the yellow eyes of my cat. But maybe I don't want yellow. So how do I change the color? I double click in the layer icon window. This is all the same in Photoshop, if you are curious. And for the ear, I think I want this to be the inside of the ear. So I'm going to do kind of a, a dusty pink color. Maybe that with a little bit more orange in it, like there. If I want to change its shape, I can go to Edit, Free Transform, just like we did for our cartoon line art. I can right click inside, and I can use any of these. I use Warp a lot, but sometimes you can get a, some nice results just using some of the others, like Skew, which helps you just tug it at the corners. And it will affect it all kind of evenly. Maybe like that. 
and then you hit return and it will do your transformations. You can always go back in your history and see if you like what it did. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so now I want this same shape to appear over here, just to review. This is a complicated shape, you know, that was warped from a triangle. So now I want to duplicate it. Command J gives me a perfect copy right on top. Then I'm going to do edit, free transform, right click inside of that transform box and say flip horizontally. So it will flip it on its axis. And then I'm just going to move it to the side, holding down shift to help lock it in place. And I can also, if I'm really going for symmetry, which vectors you try to do a lot of like really clean identity work with vectors, but you can use guides just using your move tool and click on the rulers and drag down and you'll get these visual guides, which tells me, okay, at that point, that's where the ear touches the side. So I need to move this one right to there. And then you see they match each other in their placement. If you don't get it perfect, that's absolutely fine, but that's what the guides are for. And then guides can be turned on and off as soon as you make one they show, but under view show, you'll see the shortcut for turning on and off guides, which is really just command semicolon on our computers. Okay, now this is a fun technique. I want to grow the ear, the outside edge of the ear, the black ear around the dusty pink. So I'm going to duplicate the shape again, Command J, and this time I'm going to use Transform just to make it bigger. But instead of just dragging it from a corner like that, I'm going to hold down Option while I drag it. So Edit, Free Transform, hold down Option, and it will grow from the center. What's nice about that is now I can make that black, hit Return, choose black color and then move it underneath the other one and then I can free transform it and just attach it back to the head kind of rotate it maybe distort it I could use warp again if I wanted Warp might be necessary. And as long as it stays a vector shape, it will always be perfectly clean. I won't get any kind of pixel rasterization unless I rasterize it, which you don't want to do. It's one of your requirements. You don't get to rasterize. So I got these big ear, this big ear shape now. That's a complicated shape. So now I'm going to duplicate that, Command J. And then, edit, free transform, right click, flip it horizontally, hold down shift, move it in place, try to line it up. Hit return. Now these are my vector shapes. One thing I can do is I can select two shapes together, like these two overlapping whites, and then I can do Edit Free Transform on both of them at the same time, which is making a compound path. So if I now distort these, I can do it to both at once. What you will notice is I'm not able to warp them, though. It won't give me that option unless I rasterize them or combine them. And there are ways to make combined compound vector paths that are still vector paths, but I don't want you to do that because that makes warping them really, really difficult. It's easier just to keep them as individual elements. But if you organize them together, you can do a lot of things to them together, like flip them. And we might get into groups as well. So I want a more complicated shape here, but I can't warp it. So what can I do? Well, I can always just try it again. I can use the 
ellipse tool. And instead of two circles, I can do kind of a band like this. Use the move tool, kind of move it into place. And then I want to warp it to be a more interesting shape. So those circles can get me a lot of the way. Warping is going to be pretty important. Again, trying to get it matched side to side, but it doesn't need to be perfect. And it's not going to be perfect. And that's kind of the fun of it. And even these emojis that are professionally used, because every company has to create their own emoji for their own devices. So there's Google emojis, there's Apple emojis, there's Chrome, or there's uh, Android emojis that are different than the iPhone emojis. And none of them are perfect. So if I want to shape more like this, more like kind of like a bandit mask, then that might be better, right? Okay, then let's see. I want pupils in the eyes. Let's use my guiding thing. This has red. I'm not going to use red. I'm going to use ellipses about there. And I want these to be black. So it looks like that. Then I'm going to duplicate that. Should I tilt it a little bit? Maybe. Pre transform. There we go. So I'm going to duplicate that, Command J, and I'm going to edit, free transform, and then right click inside and say flip horizontally. So I know we can't do the Control T shortcut for free transform. We used to be able to do just because of the browsers have updated. But if you right click right on, nope, never mind. <laughs> so we have to go to edit free transform, but it's worth it. It's so helpful. So then I flipped it because of the tilt and then moved it over. I can use my move tool and adjust anything where I want it, right? If I want to get an idea of where the center line is, I can use my move tool and it will stick at the center of my pixels. That's 1400 pixels. And that can help me know where to place things. Again, none of this needs to be perfect. So much of visual design and graph design is just about how it feels in its arrangement. But no, you have these tools. And then I can always go back and alter previous shapes. So again, edit free transform. Instead of just using the straight ellipse, maybe I want to use the warp. Or maybe I want to tug at it just from this bottom edge. rid of that guide. Come on. And make it like this. Hit return. All right. And then I can see what else I'm missing. Whiskers. I can change the color of the nose. We want to keep our emojis fairly simple because emojis like vector designs, like logos, are meant to be scalable, you know, recognizable and visible at very low sizes, very small sizes. Let me see. 